So we'll go into Elemental Live first. This is probably our uh, biggest selling device. If you notice, it's a 1RU. It is very dense. Um, it will do real-time transcode, so we can take in an SDI, IP, ASI. We'll transcode it in real time, and we can deliver it as multicast, unicast, any of the ABR, HEVC, MPEG-4, TS. Uh, we also offer StatMux. We introduced at NAB the world's first multi-codec StatMux, so we can put MPEG-4 and HEVC inside of a single StatMux pool. So StatMux allows you, let's say you have a 30 megabit pipe, but you've got, say, 40 megabits of video that needs to go somewhere. Algorithmically, we can make that happen because we'll put them all in a single transport stream and we will, uh, where there's heavy motion in one video, that will get the majority of the bandwidth, whereas the other ones will be uh, have a lot less activity in those, so it will shrink the bandwidth required on those. So there's a lot of compression going on, and it's very dynamically happening within that stream. So we can deliver, we can compress those uh, to get it across a 30 meg pipe. So you literally go in there and you say how big your pipe is, and then it will compress uh, down to fit the video into that pipe. So on the input side, we can take in IP, whether well, it's RTP, RTMP, uh, a single program, transport stream, multi-program, uh, or UDP multicast. Uh, SDI, uh, HD or SD, uh, ASI, um, and we can actually play a file too. So you can point it on just as storage and, and play that file in real time transcode any of these inputs to any of the outputs. So you can go HTTP with the ABR at any of the bit rates to HDS, HLS, smooth stream and MPEG dash. You can do multicast, you can put it out RTP, RTMP uh, at any of the bit rates, uh, or you can save to file. So you can archive to a file or to storage. So if you need to save to VOD for make a VOD asset from the live material, you can point to a shared storage device and save it as a high ProRes file or an HEVC file or an uh, H.264 file. So you can save in all those different formats if you want to and then immediately make those available as video on demand uh, assets in the system. So one of the things that we can do that we're seeing a lot of is if you give us a signal, an MPTS with all the channels in it, we can break out each one of those channels and we can make a, a, a multicast from each one of those. So each one of them will have a PID. So we'll break out each one of the channels. So one may be labeled ESPN. We'll create a stream set for that, all ABR. We can do that for every channel in the MPTS and create all the different uh, outputs that you want for those particular inputs. So we support AES encryption, that's AES-128 uh, in flight or at rest, so we can save the files encrypted. Uh, we support DRM across all the ABR formats, so HLS, HDS, all those uh, we do support. Nice. And we can run on Red Hat or CentOS. Uh, again, this is kind of reiterates what we're capable of doing. So just as you mentioned, we can go to the, the set-top box or the TV or laptop or any of the mobile devices. You wouldn't want all of your individuals necessarily hitting the live if there's a bunch of them. You'll want them hitting an origin server, which will kind of uh, be uh, in between the live and the user. So a little shot of our GUI, uh, very simple. You've got as many uh, adjustments as that you want to adjustments that you want to make, uh, or it can be just a simple uh, drop down. I want to stream to iPads, and it will uh, populate it with all the settings that you want to create uh, that are traditionally look really good on iPads. So but we're used to doing 24/7, 365. That's what our broadcasters rely on. So we build our equipment for that type of workflow in those environments. So here's a really simple uh, live workflow. So taking an IP or an SDI, uh, here we're showing a primary and a backup uh, elemental live unit controlled by the conductor, the management tool. And then we're streaming to a CDN, Akamai or CloudFront or whomever and then going to the display devices. The conductor can handle the failover, so if a system fails, if the primary fails, it uh, will notify the conductor, 
and or the conductor is constantly checking. The conductor will realize that the primary has failed. It will automatically can send router calls to the router to say, hey, I need those, those same feeds that were being sent to the primary to now be sent to me. It'll take all of the, the profiles that existed on that unit and it will then roll out those profiles and so the backup will now become the primary. It will constantly check to see when the primary is back online. After the time that you set in there for it to kick back, it'll all go back to the primary. <music>